Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third in this education webinar series by Henley and Partners. And today we're focusing on predominantly UK boarding schools, but I will hopefully at the end of this talk a little bit also about European boarding schools. My name is John Milne, and I'm the head of global education at Henley and Partners. And it's my great pleasure to welcome today uh, an associate for Henley and Partners and an expert in British boarding schools, Jimmy Beale. Welcome to the webinar, Jimmy. Thanks so much, John, and welcome to you all listening uh, all over the world, wherever you might be. Thanks, John. Nice to, nice to see you, Jimmy. Just a reminder to all our attendees, there is a Q&A channel and a chat channel, so if you have any questions, please pop them into those channels as we go along and I will be able to answer them or at the end we'll have a Q&A session. The webinar today is roughly around 20 minutes or so, so please sit back, relax and enjoy the best of UK and European boarding schools as presented by both Jimmy and myself. As parents of children around the world, one of the hardest things we face, one of the biggest challenges, is knowing are we doing the right thing for our children? And if we are looking at international schools, how do we know what are the best options? And how do we know who to trust to give us that insight and that information? Well, Henley and Partners works with a range of associates to give you that insight, to give you that confidence and to give you that competitive edge when it comes to choosing your child's schooling and or university in the future. And today I'm delighted to welcome former headmaster, uh, Jimmy Beal and expert on UK boarding. So Jimmy, today we're going to be talking about a range of different subjects, but first and foremost, I suppose, can you just describe to those attending today why is UK boarding school education considered some of the best in the world? Thanks so much, John. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for squeezing or trying to squeeze what could be three days of conversation into about 15 minutes. So my, my apologies to you all who are listening and watching. If, if this is broad brush, uh, we will only be able to touch upon uh, a little bit of it, but hopefully just to whet your appetite. Um, and then you can come back to, to Henley Partners to be guided uh, as to the right choice. John, John mentioned that I've, I've been a headmaster. Um, I think one of the key things is that we do this from a position of great care and that for each of your children, um, your separate children, because it can be different for different siblings, there is a super, super option um, in the UK and in Europe for you. Quality of education. Um, UK boarding schools really do hit high standards. Those are based upon traditional standards. So many of the schools, um, their models, their buildings, their teaching styles are emulated the world over. So the UK boarding schools um, and the whole UK education is, is revered and considered ad, as world leading. It is. It is. It is a really, really good one. And it does lead to superb pathways. Um, Traditional standards, I think, are, are really important. You can expect certain standards at UK boarding schools involving um, discipline, care, individual knowledge, great pastoral care, busy children who are stimulated outside of the classroom, which helps them to be stimulated within and therefore drive on their own standards. Children come from all over the world to UK boarding schools and your child, uh, whether they have a, a British education or a British background, will always be welcomed um, from wherever they come. Academic rigour. Some of, some of the, the phrases might be different, but we have nationally recognised uh, examinations and assessments. Those start really at the age of 15, 16 with the GCSEs, and many of you have heard of IGCSEs, and, and children will do a a core set of uh, subjects, including English and maths and sciences, and then we'll have choices, often doing between eight and 10 subjects, and then moving on 
at the age of 16 to either the A-levels or the IB diploma. Whichever pathway they take, uh, that will have been chosen based upon their own needs. A-levels specialise a little bit earlier. So a mad keen scientist and mathematician would probably end up focusing upon those subjects. Whereas the IB, you keep a bit more breadth. Um, as, as mentioned, both are equally uh, recognised by world leading universities. Just depends upon the child, um, whether they want to keep English and a language going, a humanities subject going into a bit later. Depends on whether they'll wish to do the IB. Um, John, do do chip in. I mean, your, your knowledge here is, is pretty good. Do ask any questions throughout, um, please. I, I, I did want to focus upon leading UK, US global universities. I think really, really important that so many of you will have an outcome in mind. Whether that's entirely appropriate, that's always to be discussed, but you may well say, okay, I wish my child to go to uh, an Ivy League university. There is nothing to stop that happening um, if your child goes to a UK boarding school at all. Children go um, from UK boarding schools onto world leading universities and increasingly, the very good academic, um, academically highly regarded UK boarding schools actually have pathways, have counselling within their schools to help. Just, just to mention, you know, two or three schools we're working with closely at the moment. Uh, forgive me looking down at my, my stats, but Wellington College, for example, um, super co-ed boarding school, about 16% of their uh, leavers will be going on towards US universities at Radley. A single sex school 2023, 20, they had 16% applying um, and some very good early offers from the Ivy Leagues. Marlborough, another super co-ed school, about 10% apply each year um, to international, most of those to the US. But you also have fantastic universities here in the UK, which are always looking to the UK boarding school to fill quite a, a good tranche of their placements, your Oxfords, your Cambridge, your Russell groups. Um, again, it depends upon the, the individual child and their academic fit and their interests for these courses, but it is a very well established pathway. John, anything to add there? Um, just a couple of questions there, Jimmy. I mean, first of all, thinking about academic rigour and yeah. in relation to the Henley academic profiling assessment, I mean, what, what can we say to parents internationally about how do they know what the best fit is for their child in terms of school and or type of school? Uh, I think I think that, 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 that's a brilliant question. Um, and, and later on, I'll, I'll talk about reputation of schools. And I think this is something that parents, they may have in their mind a fixed idea of where they wish their child to go. And having worked with hundreds of parents from all around the world, sometimes those aspirations are misplaced. Um, and that's because you've heard socially of a school. I'll just chuck one out there. We've all heard if we've got a boy, you've all heard of Eton. Eton is not right for 99.9% .9 of the children in the world. It just isn't. Styles, academic standards. So how do we support you to make those decisions? Yes, the HAPA. Um, it is an assessment that all uh, children should go through. From It can happen from quite an early age, six, eight upwards. We will get from that data uh, that norms your child's learner profile against UK uh, national standards. We would be able to tell, therefore, how academically uh, capable and what potential your child has. And that will always be the first, the leading point as to any advice we give. If they've got absolutely high flying scores and they're in the top three, four percent nationally um, against children of their age. Yes, we will be recommending the highly academic competitive uh, schools to you. If indeed the styles of teaching and styles of care at that school is right for your child. I think the key here, John, um, is that if we place a child in a school where they are happy inside of the classroom and out and they are busy and they have good friendship networks and they are feel that they're cared for and listened to as individuals they will excel yeah, they will thanks. excel I, I 
I, I, I tell a story and it leads actually to the next point, John, before I'm sure you have another question, a value adding education. What does value adding mean? If we benchmark a child at the age of 13 and say, this is where you sit at the moment, and therefore one might extrapolate that you will end up with X results. At GCSE, you are going to end up with seven grade sevens in your GCSEs. And then the child outperforms that benchmark and comes up with seven grade nines. What was it about that school that created that value added? And there's a lovely story, and it isn't apocryphal, it's real, and it was with a client of mine, where a boy was at a boarding school and he punched significantly above his weight between the age of 16 and 18. Everybody was gobsmacked with his results. Why? It was because of the beekeeping club at that school. And that sounds ridiculous, but it was because that boy was so motivated by his activity outside of the classroom and his housemaster who ran a beehive had given him responsibilities beyond his years and this boy felt so involved that it was that that allowed him to go into the classroom on a Monday and feel that he really had a part to play in the school. What is it? What is the beekeeping club for your child? That's down for us to find the right school and then for the school to encourage and motivate. Thanks. Thanks, Jimmy. And just a reminder to all of our attendees, there is a Q&A channel and I would encourage you to enter any questions that you might have into that channel. If you've got any further questions at the end of this webinar about the Henley Academic Profiling Assessment and how it can be used for your child or for your children, again, just reach out to the contact details at the end, Tess Wilkinson or indeed to myself through Henley and Partners. Okay, thanks very much, Jimmy. So we've talked about a value adding education. What about creativity? A creativity, relevance, um, personal growth. I think we'll all talk and out, out there amongst attendees, there will be leaders of business and people who are involved in, in corporations. They will all have a good idea as to what are the key skills now in 2023 and what will be the key skills in 2030, 2035. And very many of those are not just based around academic brilliance. They are about self-confidences, they are about resilience, they are about independence of mind. Without going into it in, in the detail I'd like to, that is and those are the sort of skills that are encouraged by life at and within a boarding community. Um, your children will be stimulated so much to, to crack on and get it done themselves. They will be asked to question. They will be asked to really get into those academics and, and ask the reasons why and therefore become more risk taker than they might if they were just sitting in a classroom where they are told information, just a knowledge economy and told to regurgitate. 99% um, in, in a, an exam is, is great, well done, but what have you actually learned apart from information? So th this point about the personal skills I think is most important. And if you go and see around a great boarding school and you are able to look at, observe, listen to the relationships between pupils themselves and the relationships between pupils and staff, you will understand exactly what I mean. It's, there's a real depth to the character development in these schools. And it's to that that I think is, is the, one of the greatest strengths. And, and Jimmy, along those lines, a lot of parents internationally accept that they'll get great care and great academics yeah. and lots of additional activities, but possibly three of the most important aspects of what international parents want nowadays is is my child going to be taught to be an innovator are they going to be taught to be entrepreneurial and and what role if anything in schools is um played by sustainability and looking ahead and preparing my child for the future so how up to date and modern are these boarding schools? Because it's tempting to think that they're maybe 10, 20 years behind the curve, but actually they're all very modern. 
I, I talked, I th great, John, I, I talked about quality of education, I talked about tradition. I think we have to look at the best of tradition being held onto in the great boarding schools, in boarding schools in the UK. Uh, building, buildings, systems, um, examinations, yeah, they're following established patterns, but schools would not survive uh, nowadays unless they had clear access towards innovation. Um, a school very recently that uh, we've helped place a child at is, is in North Norfolk, Gresham's, and they have built the most remarkable uh, STEM centre, science, technology, um, and engineering and maths centre created by Dyson as of Hoover fame, uh, who's an old boy of the school. Uh, it just takes one or two schools to be innovating themselves in innovation and everybody plays catch up and you get, as you possibly did 30 or 40 years ago, all schools feeling they needed a 50 meter swimming pool indoor. Now it's about innovation. Um, and that is really creating a wave within teacher training over here in the UK. How do you get a chance to become an entrepreneur? Well, it's, it's really, really interesting. It takes a lot of care, but fundamentally the child has to be taught how far up the tree to climb and safely stand on the branch before the branch breaks. It's, it's, it's having that willingness to think outside of the box. Um, and that, yes, it absolutely is encouraged. Um, and, I, and I love the way it's being done in schools at the moment. I've got to say some schools are far better at it than others. And some schools remain rather stuck in an education of probably the 1990s and the early 2000s. We find the right school for the child. Great, thanks, J thanks um, Jimmy. So on to community and network. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a brief one. International boys and girls coming into schools will be well met. They will be encouraged to be themselves. They will be celebrated for bringing their own degree of internationalism into uh, British boarding communities. They will be joined with children from all over the world. And that community and that networking will stand them in astonishing stead. If they move back to their own countries or if they stay here or they move elsewhere, they will always have a point of reference and will always be valued and will make the most remarkable friendships. There's nothing like the friendships that one can make in a boarding community um, right. and highly, highly valued. And the schools themselves, love that network they will always be following up uh, with their leavers and finding out how they're getting on and seeing if they can continue to support them thanks thanks jimmy so what does an outstanding school look like it's great I and mean, i'm going to go straight i'm going to go straight to the last bit because those are rhetorical questions um, should it be the right school for the right child yes of course it should simon henderson headmaster at, at eton college himself says you shouldn't really be asking the question, uh, you know, what is the right school for my child? Um, you know, you, you've really got to be looking into what sort of school does my child like? Results, of course, they are so important. But please, those schools that are at the top of the league tables academically and those schools that push the most children off to Oxbridge and Ivy League, they are phenomenally competitive and they take in quite the most brilliant academic children who then produce the most wonderful academic results and move off to the most brilliant universities. Take that with a slight pinch of salt. They are beautifully taught, but is that always a value adding education? The universities, careers and, de and destinations, just because they send a lot of children to Oxbridge, does it really mean it is always the best education for your child? And here's a great one, reputation. The number of times that you've heard, I'm sure, John, and I certainly have, is when my grandfather went to Marlborough College, I'd like my grandson to go there as well. Well, A, your grandson is, you know, is, is a different child. Marlborough has moved on. Reputation for other people's children and other parents, is that right for your family? So what you've got to do is strip it back and just say, what is right for my child and the team at henley and partners uh, the educational advisors 
look purely at that last point. And sometimes uh, you know, we really dive into the detail here to find out what is the right school for the right child. And we then go ahead and find it because it, it is here. It is here in the UK. Um, there are so many schools that you have not heard of possibly that would be absolutely right for your child. Thanks, Jimmy. And we've got about five minutes left. So just pushing on and talking about timing of admissions and when would be appropriate. What would be your advice? Um, the most uh, well-established route is at 16 plus for boys and girls who've had a, a very, very good international education wherever they live to come across and add the cream uh, to the top of, of the pint of milk um, by doing A-levels or the IB diploma. I would postulate that actually to come across at 13 plus and then do a settling in year, year nine, year 10 and 11, do your GCSEs or IGCSEs. I think that's a, a greater um, value adding education because you learn a little bit more about yourself um, and you take some of those academic risks a little bit earlier. If you come at 16 plus, you have an established pathway of learning. You know a lot more about yourself. Are you prepared to change as much? Some children do come across uh, from international backgrounds at 11 plus, but it's young. It's young and you've got a question, is it necessary? It might be if your family's moving about um, a lot that it offers them the stability and the solidity you need. I think 13 plus is a pretty, pretty good time uh, to come across. I'm yet to meet an 11 or 12 year old who, when offered the opportunity to come to the UK boarding school, isn't a very, very excited young person. Nervous, unsure, going to miss home, of course they will. But they just know, having seen the schools and learned more about them, that they are setting themselves up for the most remarkable life changing opportunity. Thanks, Jimmy. Excellent. And just the last plea, last five minutes of this webinar, any questions that you have, please put them into the Q&A um, chat channel and we can answer those for you. As part of this webinar, I did promise that we would be looking briefly at a number of different schools in Europe. And Jimmy and I were talking about this before the webinar and without going into too much detail, in many respects, in terms of the admissions process and in terms of the offer and in terms of the competitive benefits of European boarding schools, they're very similar in many regards to those of UK boarding schools in terms of competitiveness and preparation for life and pathways and the right time to enter. Many of the best boarding schools in Europe are very similar to UK boarding schools. And I've just put down here, and I'll go through them just over the course of a couple of minutes, probably four of the top boarding schools um, in Switzerland and in Spain, which is typically where the best boarding schools seem to be. Clearly, there are other boarding schools. And again, if you would like additional information, I can send that to you. But again, the best known boarding schools in Switzerland, Eglon College, as you can see there from its website, very, very beautiful setting, as well as La Rosie. And one of the, I suppose, distinctivenesses about these schools in Switzerland is that many of the boarding schools in Switzerland have two campuses. So again, a big benefit of boarding schools in this part of the world is that they'll have a winter campus and a summer campus. So if you're looking to give your child that special experience of studying and then playing and being creative in a summer environment, uh, La Rosie and Eglon have campuses specifically for that. And similarly in the winter, if you're interested in your child being active in that winter sports arena, then again, they're very well geared up for that opportunity. And then in Spain, which is another popular destination for boarding schools, you've obviously got two different types of top schools here that I'm highlighting. 
Um, King's College in Madrid, obviously it's a very urban setting um, in a fantastic city. And again, offers many of the benefits that Jimmy has been talking about in terms of UK boarding schools. And then possibly one that is less well known, but is certainly improving its standing internationally. And I visited this school as well as the others, and I'm really impressed by the head and the campus, the Sota Grande International School in Sota Grande in southern Spain, so not far from Gibraltar. It's added boarding in recent years. It's really focusing in on sport, and it's really going places. And so it's, again, another good example if you are interested in the best European boarding schools to look at not only Sota Grande but King's, La Rose and Eglon just as examples of fantastic schools. So turning our attention back to the webinar, if you have any questions in the future please do get in touch with Tess Wilkinson who works alongside me at Henley and Partners in the Education Department. If you would like to know more about British boarding schools, then again, please do contact us and Jimmy. We'd be more than happy to give you a free no obligations conversation around what it looks like and what it could look like for your child. If you're interested in the initial step of understanding where and in what way does my child compare to UK standards, please do consider the Henley Academic Profiling Assessment because it's a very accessible, very insightful way of trying to understand where your child is academically and what their potential is. And from there, they would then have a feedback with a specialist like Jimmy or myself who can talk you through the results and start that journey of mapping out the pathway to your child's future success. So please do get in touch. Jimmy, any final comments before we sign off on this webinar? No, I, I wish I'd have had some photos, John, um, of, of the astonishing schools that that we can point people towards. There are, there are so many. Um, and we come back again to the point that there is the right school in the UK and in Europe for your child. It's a case of working with people who will dive into the detail and advise as to which one of those schools is, is right for your, your son and daughter. I hope very much uh, to meet some of you in the, uh, in the future, but it's been a great pleasure sharing my thoughts, albeit too briefly today. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Jimmy. So unless there are any other questions in the Q&A channel, then that's it. But thank you very much, everyone, for joining us on today's webinar. You will receive the slide deck as well as a recording of this video. So thank you very much for uh, joining us. We do have two other webinars coming up, so do check out the Henley & Partners website. We have one on the Youth Profiling Index, which is a fascinating insight into how you as a parent can also understand your child's motivations and their strengths and weaknesses. And then next Monday, we also have a webinar on special educational needs. So if you and or any of your clients have any questions about children with autism or dyslexia or dyscalculia and how that would be accommodated for and supported in UK boarding schools, then please join us for that webinar. But otherwise, that's it from Henley and Partners Education. Jimmy, thank you so much for your insight and your um, experience. And we look forward to working closely in the months and years ahead. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.